Hello everyone. In this lecture, let's try to implement timer overflow interrupt in our microcontroller PIC16 of 877A. Circuit for this program is simple. We are just connecting an LED to the RB0 pin of the microcontroller and that's it. We are just going to turn on this LED for one second and turn off this LED for one second. That's all about the programming logic. But we are going to implement timer overflow interrupt method for doing this purpose. Initially, I will make the RB0 pin as output. And then I just want to enable the global interrupt enable bit from the INTCON register. Then I want to enable the PEIE from the INTCON register that is the peripheral interrupt enable bit. Then the TMR0 IE from the INTCON register which is the timer 0 interrupt enable bit. That's it about the interrupt enable bits. And in the previous lecture we just calculated and configured the option register value to be 0x07 which will set the prescalar to 256 and we calculated the load value for timer 0 to be 59 which will produce a delay of 10 millisecond that is it will take 10 milliseconds for the timer to reach 255 from 59 and now we will implement the ISR function so the ISR function goes like this void interrupt and you can give any name for the ISR inside this I will check a flag in the INT con register that is TMR0 IF Here I will increment a variable called timer count that I have initialized before. After that I will again clear the timer 0 interrupt flag. So this is the variable declared globally and for every interrupt occurrence this variable will be incremented. If your interrupt service routine is throwing you an error, don't worry, right click on this project, go to the properties and choose exceed global options and in the C standard, you just want to select the C90 standard, otherwise it will throw you an error because in this C99 standard, the format for interrupt function is different. So select this C90 and click on OK. And about the programming logic, I am just going to check the three conditions. When timer count equal to equal to zero, I will turn on the RB0 pin and if timer count equal to equal to 100 I will turn off the RB0 bit and if timer count equal to equal to 200 I will clear the timer count variable and that's all about the logic and when the program starts all the configuration settings will be done and the program enters into the void of 1 and simultaneously and parallelly the timer also starts counting from 59 and when it reaches 255 that means 10 milliseconds have been expired as we calculated in the previous lecture so 
for every 10 millisecond this interrupt function will be called automatically pausing the process that it is doing here and it will increment this timer count variable and it again comes back to this loop and it will continue this process so this is the routine for timer interrupt overflow method so when the timer count equal to equal to zero that is in the initial stage we are turning on the rb0 pin of the microcontroller and when the timer reaches the 100 10 millisecond delay that is nothing but 100 into 10 millisecond which is nothing but 1000 millisecond that is one second delay has been expired we will turn off this bit and when the 2000 millisecond delay is expired we will clear the timer count value so that the rb0 bit will be set again so in the initial stage we are setting the rb0 bit to be 1 and when the timer count value becomes 100 which means 100 into 10 millisecond 1000 millisecond delay has been expired we will clear the rb0 bit and when the 2000 millisecond delay has been expired we are clearing the timer count variable so this condition will be executed that is setting the rb0 bit will be executed so this routine continues because we have done the logic like that i'm building the project I have loaded the project to this and you can see the LED is toggling at a rate of one second using timer overflow interrupt method. This is an accurate one second delay without using the internal library of MPLABX IDE. Thanks for watching. For uploading the program onto the microcontroller, Firstly, power up the development board using external 12 volt 1 amps adapter through this socket provider. And then connect the PICKIT 3 to your PC USB port using mini USB cable. Then the terminals of PICKIT 3 are connected to the microcontroller as per this circuit diagram. If your development board is not showing these pin nodes or if you are not having a development board, you can connect the terminals of PICKIT 3 to the microcontroller port pins as per this circuit diagram. Or you can just build this circuit in a breadboard for programming the microcontroller. Once the circuit is built, click on this make and program device main project icon. You can see the device is being programmed. Click on OK. and the program and verification is complete and that's it the program has been uploaded to your microcontroller now build this circuit to see the output in the hardware and you can see this is the output that i got in my hardware Thanks for watching.